ban. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Dire team pick. Gyrocopter. Radiant team pick. seconds remaining. Hello everybody and welcome back to the defense. It's the second series of the night. It is going to be Monkey Freedom Fighters facing up against 4ASC. And uh, should be an interesting game. Durka had to leave me of course because he's doing MLG right now. So if you want to watch that, I believe it's the North American quarterfinals. If you want to watch that, uh, head over to the MLG. That's like... Some team versus some... It's not my cast. I don't remember, guys. But it is the quarterfinals. The winner faces up against Digital Chaos. I remember that much. Anyway, let's jump into uh, our game, shall we? Uh, and I'm welcoming my co-caster. I, I, I deeply apologize if this does not go well. Um, because there's not much I can really do about it. But... Blaze is going to be joining. Originally, the, the Studio One was never meant to have only one caster. So we were all supposed, always supposed to have two casters, but things have been really messy with the number of casts that we have to do right now. So uh, Blaze is going to be joining me. Blaze, are you there? Yes, I am. Hopefully coming in loud and clear. All right. Um, just, 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 just talk a little bit about the draft. I'm, I'm just going to monitor the audio levels and make sure you're good. Sure thing. So, starting things off here, we're going to have a gyrocopter clockwork opener from Monkey Freedom Fighters. This gives them a lot of options of where to go with the rest of the draft. They've got their means of initiation, they've got their means of team fighting, and they've got both the potential to fight early on and push, as well as just to go late game, depending on what they want to pick up next. So, this ambiguity really helps them go into the next stage of the game confidently. Four anchors, they've got their kind of classic storm farming in the safe lane, able to farm stacked camps and snowball pretty well. The Earthshaker to cover him in case they the mid matchup gets a little bit rocky. Um, so neither team really showing their hand just yet, but uh, I'm curious mm -hmm. if this uh, new guy, OKC, is drafting style, really what he wants to bring uh, to his next few picks. He's, I've been looking at their drafting history, and they've got some interesting cards to play. Okay, so um, I, I'm just going to turn myself down ever so slightly. Um, you're, you're a little bit quiet. Unfortunately, I can't raise you any higher, so I'm just going to try and... <laughs> Bring down the level a little bit across the board, so you guys watching in, maybe just turn up your volume a little bit. I'll I'll try to just I'll, I will be paying attention to the Twitch chat. Just let me know. Unfortunately, I I had no time to test any of this, so that's why I kind of apologize before we even started because who knows what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, reborn audio honestly is not is not bad. Uh, so yeah, cool cool stuff, cool stuff. Um, and hi Blaze, it's been a while since we casted together. Hello. Yeah, yeah, a little bit here. I've been hey, casting up with Durka and doing some other stuff, but uh, yeah, you and I haven't really uh, seen much action since uh, TI, so it's good to hear from you once again. Got to see that last game between you and Durka, man. That was pretty ridiculous <laughs> what No-Tail was able to bring. I mean, that's just <laughs> no -tail, almost man. unprecedented. Radio yeah, No-Tail. Uh, that's right, it's Fire Dota versus High Councils of Wizards and Priests was the was the MLG matchup. So again, if you want to watch that, mlg.tv slash join Dota. Uh, we have a visage for Monkey Freedom Fighters. Uh, Dazzle going to be picked up by 4ASC now, one of the higher value supports, but it's the visage that really interested me. Visage has been picked up um, by a couple of specific teams and is kind of... Um, it, it seems to be pretty highly valued. I feel like the visage is... Um, it, 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 Clairvoyance has said this to me. Play, uh, Blitz has said me, this to me as well. Um, I, I feel like the hero's really, really strong right now, but he just wasn't picked up um, in the like pre-TI meta at all. Um, but I'm not really uh -huh. sure why. 
Yeah, it's it's kind of confusing. It just kind of comes down to the trends and what people feel is most optimal at the time. Vistas has always been a great pick. He used to be OP, then they fixed the familiars there, but uh, now he's just been a really solid pick. But people have been looking towards the other drafts and looking for something that isn't just good. It's like amazing and unstoppable. And Visage is never really unstoppable. He is a really good contribution to the team lineup, especially when he can get some extra farm. Um, but uh, in the right hands, this hero can still do amazing work. I'm a really big fan of running it myself. And yeah, I, I think the fact that they already have the Gyrocopter and the Shadow Shaman makes their tri-lane environment extremely powerful. And I'm not sure if that's enough to prompt them to actually go for like a, an aggressive tri-lane, putting Glockwork safe lane versus uh, the four anchors duo, perhaps. Um, Right now, it looks like Earthshaker Dazzle support, and then Spearbreaker can be offlane core. And what I've seen four anchors been drafting up for the most part is actually like a offlaning support to get the Spearbreaker off his feet, like in an interesting way. Like the Tusk is out of the pool from phase one, but they have a couple of options as far as what to pair in that aggressive stance. Right. Ten seconds remaining. Dragonite band away, and a Klinks is the response by Monkey Freedom Fighters. So I could see a, a Klinks kind of working here for 4 AAC. Klinks is actually one of those heroes I was thinking about earlier today, where, um, again, he seems kind of team-specific. Some teams really like him as a carry. For example, um, Complexity um, used to run Klinks quite a bit. Ziz, um, probably one of his better heroes. Um, for me, alongside Ember Spirit and Naga Siren. Um, a lot of physical damage, a lot of pushing power, and again, one of those heroes that um, it takes advantage of the Desolator being such cheap damage, which is a primary reason why we see uh, Templar Assassin come back into the meta so heavily. Yeah, now going into the last pick here. One minute on the clock for four anchors. I, I think that they're still trying to force this duo, but I'm not so confident in their late game. I, I kind of feel like they need to go for like a safe lane pickup uh, that can kind of single target out the gyrocopter while still withstanding what's come, kind of being pressured from the supports. So you've got a lot of magical nukes and damage output. You don't get AM, you don't get kill, you don't get clicks. Like These are all the classic one position heroes. And four anchors, I'm really not sure what they can feel confident in the safe lane. Maybe they can go with a Slark and uh, throw back to some of their older drafting style, but even that will have some difficulty getting off the ground in terms of farm. Hmm. 4AC taking a lot of time to think about their last carry. Uh, Slark it is. 4AC it's uh, kind of a favorite of theirs, but that, that I, I I combine Slark in my head with 4AC back in their in their older lineup. But yeah. I mean it's a very this Matumba lineup, man hero. So what's that? It's a very Matumba man hero. I mean, obviously, yeah, like exactly. that, that's what they drafted for is just the the amount of presence that he could bring with this hero. Because Matumba man, unlike most Slarks at the time when this this hero got really popular, a Matumba man brought a level of aggression that no other Slark was. Bring in. Most people farmed it for the late game said, hey, I'm a 60-minute Slark, I have amazing scalability, but Matumba Man just started really upping the tempo of what you could do with the hero and finding gank opportunities with it, and I think for... ...here's obviously an amazing to be seen if Boogie can fill Matumba Man's shoes in that regard. Oh, okay. I did not expect that last pick. I was like, what mids are left? Like Templar Assassin's gone, Queen of Pain's gone, etc., etc., etc. Puck, a rise puck. It actually works really well, I think, with the Shadow Shaman, Visage, and the Gyrocopter because they all have some sort of like stand and fight ability. You have wards from the Shadow Shaman, you have the familiar um, coming out from the Visage, and then the Gyrocopter has that call down. So I uh, across the board, I'm looking at it and going, there's a lot of these abilities that the coil will set up in one way or another. So I, I kind of like the pickup, but at the same time, there's a reason this hero hasn't been picked up extensively. <laughs> So we're going to see an interesting matchup here. I mean, Storm versus Puck, 1v1, Null Tally starts. Uh, it's really hard to call either side being in a con conclusive uh, victor in this. I mean, obviously, we know that the Storm Spirit is going to be looking to farm in his jungle and stuff like that. And I think the Earthshaker can really mess with the Puck if he ever orbs offensively. But Arise is kind of renowned for being able to really make big plays happen, especially when he gets the blink online. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. 
30 seconds. Uh, yeah, looks like we're Luxembourg, which seems to make sense for the matchup. <laughs> yeah, that, that shouldn't shouldn't be bad for uh, for Mad. So maybe you just got a poor connection to the server right now or something. Uh, we are going to see MFF. They are looking to try and challenge this bottom lane a little bit, though. If it's the full four, man, I doubt they'll go for it. They do have um, a decent level one, but it's not strong enough to contest, especially um, with a numbers advantage. So Rise will could just cop a little bit of damage. Not a great start as he's already got burned through one of those shared tangos, but um, we'll see. He should do all right versus the Storm Spirit, especially with the, the phase shift. You can usually do um, a okay job at being able to dodge some of the Storm Spirit's uh, harassment. So if he can just pick up his bottle with just using that one shared tango, he'll be all right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be seeing some lane blocking coming in from Sing Sing on the bottom lane. The clockwork there. Boots first, clockwork with on the dire side. This guy is going to be able to really just control the creep wave and pretty much never put himself in harm's way unless he's getting a little greedy. On the other hand, the Earthshaker isn't blocking for the 4AC offlaner, so the Spirit Breaker might have some trouble if uh, there's good creep control. There's no block on the pull on the dire side, and there's no control of the creep equilibrium for 4AC. I really feel like Trixie is going to have trouble getting past level two yeah i could kind of see that the the it, it they used it to be able to like ensure that they did get that bottom rune and there wouldn't be a contest like Urshaker was sitting down there but just looking at the situation that the spirit breaker is in it feels like he it would have been much better to have volix um up there making sure that level two was easy for a trixie to pick up and then all of a sudden you have that roaming potential into the middle lane you know who knows what can happen from there even just challenging the supports is a lot easier <laughs> when you have the charge and the bash uh middle lane arise part of the problem is that the um against the storm spirit is that you can't dodge his right click um over mm -hmm. because if it misses nemphi will just do another attack and uh it still keeps the overload proc if you miss so this yeah. is going to be a bit of the problem with um with arise but he's already beginning to uh chew through his extra consumables that he brought via the bounty room yeah, but if he plays it smart, this means he's still going to be able to dodge out the key things, which is the Fisher charge combo. If the Spirit Breaker and the Earthshaker both help, try to help the Storm Spirit go for the kill, then there, it's going to be a Rise that can get out of that pretty well, as long as he has the orb. In this case, they're still trading back and forth, and Nephi will get the better trades, but he's not going to die unless he makes a mistake. Valix actually missing the Fisher. That would have been uh, a good opportunity to bring the puck pretty low. But unfortunately misses out if they had, they'd hit that fissure a rise might have been low enough that nempy could have just bullied him out of lane but that's not the case and it looks like a rise unless he misses some cs here should be able to get his bottle before he's pushed out entirely uh, I'm just looking at the polling situation, and it's completely different between the two sides. The Visage here is already halfway through level 2. Fucking Mad is zoning out really nicely on the Shadow Shaman. Trixie uh, is going to be sitting at level 2 for a while, and in fact, they might be able to go for a gank. The Shockwave comes in from the Seder, and there seems to be some miscommunication or lag for Mad. But either way, it's going to be the Spear Breaker under much more fire. And uh, the Dazzle, the Earthshaker, they're not doing as much. Yeah, it seemed like both the Frenchmen didn't really want to go for that kill on Trixie, but if he keeps coming forward like that, um, they will see an opportunity to get some Rocket Barrage damage. Highly unlikely they'll ever kill Trixie, especially with Falix sitting on the side here. He's uh, If Mad comes forward aggressively, Trixie may just be able to get a lot of right-click damage onto Mad. As you can see, they're going to go for him now. The Creep Wave is coming in. They're trying to dodge a lot of this damage. And oh. they will be able to get Trixie out. He's wow, way lower than close. I expected. Jesus, 13 HP. I was like, ah, he's fine. The blast isn't going to do that much. But it almost does finish off Trixie for the uh, first blood. Yeah, even level 1 Soul Assumption has insane potential damage output there. So you always got to keep an eye on that. Another thing is it's not uh, disjointable. So even if like, the Slark pounces or Shadow Dances, he's still going to get hit by it. You, have, you cannot underestimate the spell in this game in particular. We're actually going to see a pretty active exchange for this 4-minute rune top. Oh yeah, they're going to go for a rise here with a charge in. They're going to be able to pick up that Invis rune as well. Trixie will get out and Nemphi trying to right-click down. Oh, that Fisher comes in and now Mad's going to go down as well. Challenging over the rune turns bad from Monk Freedom Fighters as 4ASC pick up the first blood and a second kill. 
Mm-hmm. And they don't even deny the storm the rune. The spear, bre- the smash can still rotate to the bottom bounty rune if he wants it. And uh, the spear breaker picking up the invis rune doesn't really change the situation at all. So mm-hmm. really great setup for d- double kill momentum for the storm spirit. And that's before he gets level six. Now he really comes online. Yeah, Vox is actually uh, given the bottle by Nemphi. He's gonna pick up the bounty rune and then hand off the full bottle to um to the storm spirit so as you said they'll have that extra bit of regen for nymphy no cost on that invis being taken away from him hmm. uh shadow shaman I'm curious about, to uh, the bottom lane mm-hmm. yeah i'm curious about the contribution of shadow shaman bottom because you're up against a slark if you time the dark pack well you really shouldn't have to worry too much about the shadow shaman but i guess there might be some situations where it gets caught off guard caught out by some disables Fisher comes out. Arise will take a bit of extra damage because of that. The Shadow Shaman is here, but Puck is in level 6, so they really don't have the control. They don't, they don't have the jump. You kind of need that mini stun from the coil to ensure that the Shadow Shaman can get in range, especially since he's operating on no boots. So it's 2-0 to zero right now, and 4 ASC are looking to win almost every single lane. Obviously, that bottom lane is going well for the um, for Sing Sing. He's getting a lot of experience. He's going the maxed out rocket build, which we see from uh, Moon Meander all the time. So a lot more farming capabilities, especially against the Slark, who's so dangerous in lane. Um, before you have a TP, obviously he has a TP now, but <laughs> before that point, it's just so much kill power that you got to play a little bit more passive. A regen is going to be picked up by Sing Sing, choosing not to hand that one over to Nemphi. Nemphi is probably a little bit sad about that fact, but he'll bottle crow his way to victory. Mm-hmm. And I've seen you even go for the Rocket Flare quite a few times when you run the offlane clockwork. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. You can contribute to the push that's going to be ensuing up top pretty soon for their team. You can obviously farm up creeps, uh, disrupt pulls. Like, there's a lot of value in getting this extra damage for the same mana. Yeah, I think it's a really good, easy way to farm on the clockwork. Uh, maxed out Rocket Flare, you like two shot range creeps, and you should be able to take easily like two. I, I would say, in, like on average, you're Trixie. thinking about four CS for every two rockets. Uh, Trixie is going to charge away here. The nuke isn't quite enough, and he will be able to, uh, to get out. But um, I think going back to it, well, Moon Meander always goes for the max rocket build. I think Sing Sing's probably looking at this and going, it's a little bit more about the heroes that he's facing. Um, every single one of the cores is able to get away from the cogs in some fashion, right? So the, the yeah. Slark has Pounce Out, or he has his ultimate. Like, Battery Salt just is simply not a very effective ability against the Slark or the uh, Storm Spirit. You would much prefer the extra burst damage of the, the Rocket Flare. Absolutely. And I mean, even the chance of him getting bashed out of his cogs really hurts. We're going to see actually a really good uh, amount of distance set by Arise here. He has an Observer Ward on the high ground, sees the Earthshaker, and literally just sits just outside the range of that Fisher. So probably pretty annoying for Volix here, who has now missed a second uh, Fisher uh, because of range alone. And uh, that's just going to make it harder for him to contribute. He does get his Arcane Boots, so obviously the Mana Sustain is going to be there, as opposed to like the Visage, who's running on one spell until he uh, heads back to the Fountain. Um, um, but I have a question for you. Why aren't we seeing a much pushing coming in from Monkey's Freedom Fighter? They've forced the Spirit Breaker away from the lane twice now, and at no point have we seen Chaskova just turn on his Ring of Aquila and start hitting on the Tier 1. It might be because they um, are looking at this and going... They're going to rotate the Spear Breaker or the Earthshaker over, and Earthshaker especially is not a bad hero de- defending those offlane towers. Um, so maybe that's the thought process, but the pressure would be nice. The Absur is just going to get bursted down here as Nemphi finds him cutting across into the uh, the jungle. But, yeah, I mean, especially in situations like that, you see 4 ASC, 3 middle. I think the time is to put pressure on that top lane, even if the rotation does occur from the Spirit Breaker, at least it keeps the heroes away from middle lane, where Arise can perhaps do a bit more. Yeah, I just feel like this top lane's been pretty lax, and it's like 4 AC, they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, we can defend it, we can get some free experience there, but there's really no uh, emphasis on MFF to really bring this thing down or to force heroes to stick around here. Sure, you're afraid of the Storm Spirit rotation at an impromptu time, but... I definitely think that there's some value in actually kind of deciding where 4ESC have to move and kind of prompting that. 
He yeah, said, well, he's I'm just going to clear through farm like this. I mean, yeah. like he's been out of mana and life three different times in the jungle, and there's been no way to punish it because they're not putting pressure on the tower. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Take a look at the net worth. Because of all that stack farming, uh, Storm Spirit is actually top of the net worth board. 4,500, and Slark is not too far behind either, so the difference between the Puck and the Storm Spirit is massive. And our Slark yeah. is going, I mean, uh, Boogie's going the maxed out Dark Pack build, which allows him to farm up the jungle as well. Um, we've seen this from a lot of Slarks lately. Not going for the Midas as often, but the maxed out Dark Pack in order to ensure that they still have plenty of farming capability. Yeah. So I'm curious, actually, how the Puck is going to have to build this. Does he just uh, avoid the power treads, go blank? Oh, nice little combo here onto Boogie, but he's got so many spells to get out. And uh, I'm sure the Spirit Breaker will cancel his charge, too. But uh, uh, meanwhile, up top, this could be a pretty easy support kill, almost as easy as the first one we saw. The, but with the Gyrocopter here, with his ultimate, they're going to have to dodge out afterwards. Yeah, this is awkward. They, uh, they're they actually... Oh, man, oh. the control is there. They do manage to get their turnaround kill. The charge completes from Trixie, but he doesn't want to be here. He's going to be bursted down as well, and that's going to be a second kill going the way of Monkey Freedom Fires. Jarcopter picks that one up. But, um, yeah, the Storm Spirit just after the fact, getting the kill on the Visage makes it a really <laughs> bad trade. He doesn't get the experience, and, and then on top of that, he's obviously traded himself for a support hero. And now that they've uh, rotated Sing Sing, they want to get more out of it. They're going to start putting damage into the tower while Mad just kind of continues to stack and, and get his mana back up. But yeah, in this position, just that first big rotation, winning their exchange, helps in every way but one. The Slark does get a little bit more space, and actually now they're going to be able to make a full jump onto Sashkova. Oh man, that, that pushback from the Cogs, it was the right place, but unfortunately pushed back the Spirit Breaker rather than Nemphi. And Nemphi is actually going to try and run down Sing Sing here. He's going to hookshot himself away though. Knows the charge is coming out. He's got Battery Saw, he's got Cogs. He knows he's just going to have to use it here and try and get out of the Cogs himself. Nemphi doesn't actually have the range to be able to get the right click on Beaver Knight to ensure the kill. And now for AAC, they might be overextended. No TPs onto the Tier 1 Towers. Arise is going to catch up though. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his ultimate. Echo Slang is Ooh. Out, but Mad stays one step ahead of it. Silence onto Valix. And Yaptor is now going to slow him down. Valix, it looks like he's just going to be given away. Good child, Grave Save. Oh. Gyrocopter is going to catch yeah, and they're up on the, the, the call down. Oh, oh call okay. Down. See, uh, turns around and tries to save the Earthshaker, but that just results in another kill. Meanwhile, Trixie actually comes in from the side to go on Mad, but now he's going to be stunned up by the familiars and taken out. Or AC just go way too deep. Absolutely, they just stuck around way too long. They are sh like if they had just abandoned ship five seconds beforehand, it would have been fine, and they would have actually been ahead in this game with how much the Slark was able to get. The Slark got the tier one tower and is almost at a hundred last hits. Boogie's doing really well, just kind of having his lane to himself. But because they ended up overstaying their welcome up top and feeding those kills away, I, I would say that's still an even exchange in the end. And uh, those those <laughs> levels are going to be meaning a lot for the Shadow Shaman and the Visage. We already see the familiars in play, and when you have both the birds and the snakes in play you can break towers down so quickly and start taking control of the map yeah the whole zoo is going to come out and play soon for monkey freedom fighters pretty apt considering their name they're going to have a charge here on beaver knight they're going to go for this kill with boogie if they can get the charge hmm. and the pounce it should be good but sing sing sitting so far back it would be uh, too risky to go for that dive past a tier 2 tower so instead they're just going to try and take out the tower but can't even do that much, so I'll have to rotate back out. Yeah, and what a, what a big swing. You said I, the, that 4AC diving in like that pretty much gave back all the golden experience that they earned. That's exactly the way the net worth and uh, the experience chart read. Uh, in fact, Monkey Freedom Fire is getting a little bit of extra experience, probably because 4AC bumped up their levels a little bit, getting those kills, and then promptly fed those kills back into Monkey Freedom Fighters, making even more value and experience. Yeah, and I think that it's really important to look at the net worth values of the Storm and the Puck as uh, we approach this next stage of the game. Nemphi was dominating this this Puck in terms of net worth values. He was going to be able to get the Orchid out way before the Puck could get anything to respond with. But at least for right now, uh, we do see that Arise has picked up his Blink Dagger. And next, he's going to be looking for that Yule Scepter. If he can Yules through the Orchid, he's just going to be able to get out of pretty much any rough situation. Uh, Valix. 
does have the uh, the fishery. He's just farming up the middle lane. He's halfway to his um, his blink dagger right now. Jump over. Hmm. Oh, uh, Silent oh. Haley onto Nemfi. Big turnaround here. Box is going to try and come forward for the Echo Slam. Hits it on three. Great setup. And now Nemfi's actually going to be saved here. Gets out of the coil thanks to a Shallow Grave TP out. And Bollix. I mean, well played, soldier. He dies, but he got a counter kill and saved the Storm Sphere in the process. Trixie, though, is not going to be saved. Paris is going to be able to pick up no. that kill, so. In the meantime, though, Boogie does take the Tier 2 tower. Just Ring of Aquila, Drum of Endurance, a very active pushing build. He wants to just get a lot of farm in the jungle and a lot of farm on the lane, and he's doing just that now at the top of the net worth, despite uh, being involved in zero kills. Zero, zero, zero Slark here. Not the aggressive Slark we, we thought was a possibility in the draft, but now he's got an item that might facilitate that a little better. Going for the early Blink Dagger, he's got durability with his current stat build. He's got mobility with the drums and the Blink, and he just has to kind of find his opening. So maybe a little bit more patience from him, a few more minutes, and he's going to start to actually get very active this game, and, and probably for, for good reason. I mean, they have great tools to initiate. Uh, they just need to, now that they have the Orchid on Nemphi, they just need to find the Blink Dagger and Earthshaker, and they can jump anybody across the map. Mm. All right, Nemphi looking for that first big kill. Now that he has the Orchid, is going to be searching for Rise in the middle lane. He's shown himself with the orb. The rest of the smoke is going to head on to bottom lane. Uh, the charge is coming out, but interrupted by the coil. But now Rise is immediately going to get turned around on. Oh, but he managed to jump over. Still, though, gets ulted up. And the Orchid plus the pop is not quite enough. A little bit of dodge there. Face it, but he runs into a remnant in the process. Still, though, the Storm Sphere goes down at the same time. And uh, they got the Shadow Shump. At that bottom mm -hmm, lane, yep. that was where the the smoke headed in. Invisible. Exactly, and the clockwork just goes ahead, a blade mail TPs away, and he's able to get out, so it's only a one kill action down there. But then you have to look at the one for one in mid, which at first looks bad, but that's their unveiling of some big items. The blink dagger on the slark, uh, the orchid on the storm. Now Monkey's Freedom Fighters know exactly what they're dealing with for this next uh, set of fights, and Paris is almost to his BKB, which is probably as impactful as both those items put together. <laughs> Monkey Freedom Fighters are on the hunt now on uh, middle lane. If they can catch Valix, this would be perfect timing, considering his Blink Dagger is almost up. And it seems almost all but assured, but Valix actually backs up at just the perfect time. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. If he moves forward, even just like halfway between the Tier 1 and Tier 2, they easily dive him, but he's not going for it. Smart man actually heads up to the top lane, despite how close he is to the Blink Tagger. It would be, you know, so tempting to just throw out one Fisher, you know, and try and get a little bit more CS, mm -hmm. but he uh, he doesn't reveal, won't give up that gold, and 4AC will continue to push out the top lane while giving up the mid. And he'll actually sell the for the Blink Tagger. has some really amazing Observer Wards right now. Uh, just spreading the map right now with three critical point choke points the, towards the jungle, towards the mid lane, and uh, obviously right over to the Roche Pit. Th those three wards are going to be up for a little while, and they've already given some amazing intel for Four Anchors to make the right movement across the map. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 9k on both the Slark and the Storm Spirit. Um, they do have a lot of farm on the Visage, which is kind of the silver lining for Monkey Freedom Fighters, but then again, Earthshaker has his primary item, so you know, who really cares? The Visage is going to take a bit more time to really come online with that amount of net worth that he has. Trying to build into yeah, the Solar Crust Yeah, it looks like he's right actually now. just going straight Solar Crust. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. the, if you want the point booster, you'd have it by now. I kind of prefer it just because that extra little boost of HP is really nice before you go for the full Solar Crust. But here he just wants the full value against the Slark. Put the Solar Crust out with the uh, missed chance and make sure that there's no way that he can focus down your course. Yeah, it seems like all the Visages are doing that nowadays. Long jump, but Mad has already backed himself away. Um, but yeah, Solar Crest, I haven't seen an Aghanim's first, not even Aghanim's after medallion in in years. <laughs> I don't, well, not in years, yeah. obviously. I mean, but. I would say that the, the, the two builds right now are either uh, the medallion, then point booster, then Solar Crest, or just straight Solar Crest. And yeah. I, I personally like the better like HP and mana pool for the cost of slot efficiency, but the mm -hmm. Solar Crest has its place when you're up against a really right-click dependent core like Slark. All right.
slight uh slight pause time sorry guys you, you're not really familiar with the pause situation are you um so heroes disconnect and and when they have some small issues you, you do have to wait a little while I, I know you haven't really run into that much especially not today, no but, no yeah never I, I I never have a whole entire sit down story. To, I, I mean, uh, uh, last time I casted the defense with with uh, Blitz, we had like I swear to God, we filled up like forty minutes of downtime just bullshitting in the studio, the two of us. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's one Great. hero and then a different one. What's that about? Now both teams are are having some problems. Very interesting. All right, I am paying attention to chat. If you guys just let me know what what you need, because um, the sound of my ears unfortunately is not the same as what goes out on stream. So, um, if just just continue to let me know uh, where I need to slightly change up the sounds, and everything will be golden. Uh, by the way, guys, if you guys want to watch uh, MLG that's happening right now, um, Durka is casting it with Clairvoyance. That is Fire versus the High Council of Wizards and Priests. That's the quarterfinals of the MLG American Qualifier for the World Finals. Um, the winner of that will go on to face Digital Chaos, who will then go on to face Cloud9. I think Cloud9 is in the finals. I, I should know because I cast at the semifinal, but <laughs> all these games are just blurring together. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, just, we, we're running Nine like five sharp. tournaments right now. It's something absurd. We've got defense, WCA, ESL, D2CL. So that's four by itself. Is there anything else? I don't think so. But still, four tournaments all the time. We're literally using all three studios every single day. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. And we have an outside caster, a contract caster, doing D two CL for right now, just because mm -hmm. they uh, they they're like, oh no, we're only gonna have like one or two games early on, and then we'll we'll start building up a. A little bit later on, and then they probably dump like five games on us, and we're just like, nope, nope, can't, we can't, we can't cover that. It's tough, man, but you know the the compression from the majors. Everybody has like the kind of this prime time right now, where all the teams are actually stable and formed, but not stuck in worrying worrying about qualifiers and stuff like that. This is really yeah. Dota prime time between those events. Yeah, in fact, it's not too long till we actually have uh, LAN events start happening. ESL One New York is coming up soon, and then it's like another two weekends after that, and then you get uh, MLG World Finals. And next thing you know, you've got the. the uh, I, I don't even know when the defense finals is going to be, to be honest. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Slark has his first ultimate orb working towards the, the Scotty, I would presume. Bottom lane's gonna be pushed down with the Serpent Wards being committed for AC. Not gonna worry about it, instead just going for the split pushing will take the middle lane tower and get some damage on the top lane tower at the same time. Deny? Oh, they got it. Damn. And uh, this sh this uh, move here from Monkey Freedom Fighters shows a lack of confidence in their ability to c keep control over the Roche Pit. With the Blink Echo Slam, with the Storm Aegis Snatch potential, uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in Roshan. But normally, if you're saving your Mad Serpent Wards for as long as you have been, actually, 7 Mad's going to go down just to Trixie on the bottom lane. Boogie coming in to nab that last hit. But, yeah, if you have your Serpent Wards for this long, this is actually, I think, the first set of Mad Serpent Wards we've seen, or Mad Bird Wards, as they may be. Uh, mm -hmm. We're 20 minutes into the game, and he's dropping them on the tier one bottom. That's because they don't feel confident enough to drop them in the rush pit. Yeah, and as it is, I can understand why 4AC are actually leading uh, a decent chunk of golden experience right now, especially with the Slark being so overly farmed as he is in the Storm Spirit. With that, Orchid is now working towards uh, a Bloodstone. <laughs> 
actually impressed how well Nemphi has been involved and has been active farming without a soul ring in his inventory. Kind of look at the soul ring as a staple for the storm spirit, especially you can tread swap with it to get a lot of mana sustain, but he's been able to do well enough with his allies nearby, with a pair of arcane boots beside him, that he's actually been able to go this entire game to this point without a soul ring, which is quite impressive. The old scepter is coming out soon on our puck to help deal with that orchid, as that's just a bit too threatening for the uh, the puck. We're gonna have a four-man smoke now. This is probably them going into Roshan. They have the wards up right now. Is this gonna be scouted though? Storm Spirit isn't any anywhere nearby. So many heroes are in the top lane. Yeah. Uh, it looks like distance alone makes. Oh, they actually have the Solar Crest complete for Yapsor. So, yeah, the Roshan's definitely dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, the distance factor there. The, they have no rotation power right now. They're going to try to go for the smoke. They have blink, they have ball, but it's just going to be a little bit too late. They might be able to get them coming out of the pit, away from the wards, but they will not stop this Roche. So Aegis now for the Gyrocopter, Yules on the Puck, and Monkey Freedom Fighters. I think for the first time uh, all game, actually feel confident really pushing out against, um, against 4 AAC and forcing fights. Yeah, I think they have a lot of potential now. The Slark is starting to become a, a worry, though. They've they've finally become confident against 4ASC as a whole, but now one hero in particular is going to be a very scary thing to deal with, and that's going to be Boogie's Slark. I mean, point booster away from that Scotty, and he can just jump on the Gyrocopter for pretty much the whole team fight. Unless they get a, a, a find a way to make the shackles connect from Mad, I don't know if they can actually handle Boogie. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Boogie rotating around in the enemy jungle, not finding anything. Meanwhile, Mad playing uh, very aggressive. All on his lonesome is setting up some wards in the enemy jungle. Nemphi, fortunately for Mad, is not going to be able to spot Mad until Mad shows himself to get a little bit greedy. Zaps a creep and will now die to Nemphi. <laughs> helping Nemphi actually almost finish up that bloodstone. He's just a recipe away at this point. Mm -hmm. So, I want to talk to you about uh, the draft and the late game. Now that we're kind of approaching past this early stage of the game, we're going to be looking at what teams can accomplish over the next 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, looking at that last pick, Slark, uh, it wasn't... There are some ways for them to deal with it, uh, Dream Coiling it, nuking him down. But now that he's actually starting to get tanky, I feel like he's always going to get the Shadow Dance off in the fights. And, and from there, how do you actually manage a Slark that that's, that's that big? Hmm... Yeah, I think you need, like, Dark Pact doesn't remove the coil. It does remove, obviously, like, most Slarks will look to be able to Dark Pact um, as they leave the coil. Um, so it doesn't do, like, hardly any stun at all. But I think you just mm -hmm. try and um, maybe force the Puck's disables on him as much as possible. Like, even going so far as, like, Yule Sceptering him in the beginning of the fight, if you're um, perhaps getting the initiation, you don't have to worry about the Orchid as much. Um, even going so far as that, because I, I think you're right. I don't think there's an opportunity for them to be able to burst him down uh, especially if he's with his team. So if he always gets off that Shadow Dance, he's always able to start racking up um, the stat steal on heroes like the, the Gyrocopter, easily cleaning through these supports. So, and especially with the way that 4AC are just avoiding fights right now, um, they're, they're not mm -hmm. actually taking it to Monkey Freedom Fighters, which means the next time we do see Slark fully engage with uh, MFF, he may be even tankier. Maybe he even has, like, Talisman of Evasion, or goes for the BKB, or actually has, uh, I suppose, a Basher, which gives you a slight bit of uh, strength. But even just levels, you know? Uh, Boogie is <laughs> going to get stronger and stronger as time goes on. Yeah, we're actually going to see uh, Trixie get very close to Mad here, but I'm not sure if they're actually pursue on to the Shadow Shaman now. He's just going to get the TP away. Um, so one thing I want to talk about is potential defensive items. One thing you can do for the Slark here, oh, pretty long jump. He sees, they charge, they could still go for this with the regen rune. Yeah, Yapsor actually already blew away his uh, Solar Crest, so those first couple of hits doing a full amount of damage. Trixie joins them, and this is just in time for Nemphi to get that additional Bloodstone mm -hmm. uh, charge. And we'll be able to go back to full HP and full mana, too, thanks to the regen. I think one thing to, to look into... Oh, we might see a hook shot here on the Slark. There's going to be the Blink All Silence. Right. Can they follow it up with enough Disable, though? 
This is the true test. They're going to throw everything when it gets off the Shadow Dance. And now things turn so badly. The Echo Slam from Valak sets the whole entire fight up. And Paris comes back with his BKB. But it's just too late. He's going to be kited around and slowly eaten alive by the Slark. Stat, 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 and stat. 15 to 8 now. What? Weapon. Monkey Freedom Fighters after the pickoff on the Visage. I cannot believe Monkey Freedom Fighters turned on Boogie, but that was pretty much their only opportunity to kill that Slark, and they came close. They came damn close, but he still got off the Shadow Dance. Yeah, and I actually don't even think there was a Shallow Grave in that fight, so it just shows that the Scotty is really all they needed to feel confident in that. They go right up against a BKB Aegis Gyrocopter and say, you, you don't have the means to control our hero, we'll get the powers at B GG. to bring him down, and now, yeah, this Slark is an auto-win once you get that Scotty in this context. Yep, so Monkey Freedom Fighters call it. Game number one goes to 4 AAC. So, well done. Uh, for AAC, I actually did not have a whole lot of confidence into them. Um, just seeing them in their last couple of, of series, I felt like there were a lot of mistakes. But here, Valix, I mean, Valix played it really well. There, there were a couple like walk-in echo slams, like that middle lane one that was insane that echo slam in the top lane obviously like boom the whole entire game was just done from there um Nemphy played it very well obviously boogie just free farmed his his heart out um so i think 4ac did quite well as a whole and okcs set uh, the whole thing up with um the the draft so 4ac kind of bolstering my confidence into them um going further in the defense they are actually um now three and zero so they are sitting very comfortably in second place not having dropped a game just yet we'll see whether they do in game number two though against monkey freedom fighters we'll be back in just a bit